Hi everybody, welcome to another HD DWF repair video. It is Apple 2GS season now, so here is another faulty motherboard on my bench. I have already connected the external drive to show this board's fault. Basically it is as if no drive is connected at all. As always, the first thing to do is to look at the relevant part on the schematics. Here is the disconnector J8. As we can see, almost every signal is going to the IWM IC. However, we should first check that all the power supply pins show continuity with the correct power rails. For instance, pins 1, 2 and 3 should be grounded. Pin 5 goes to the minus 12 volts rail. Pin 6 goes to plus 5 volts and Pins 7 and 8 go to plus 12 volts, so let's check these first. The ground pins are ok. Minus 12. Plus 5. And plus 12, all ok. So, what should we check now? Of course, first of all, that the IWM is getting plus 5 volts on pin 26. And that's ok. Other things worth checking are whether or not the chip is getting the reset signal on pin 23 and the clock signal on pin 24. Now, in theory, I should check all the connections with the address and data bus and whether or not the device select input shows any activity. However, I took a shortcut. Let's see first if there is any activity on pins 19 and 20 that are the try 2 and try 1 enabled signals. Hmm, that's not even a correct logic level. Now, since both drive select pins showed only noise, this means unfortunately that the IWM integrated circuit is bad. So I've just cut it out of the PCB pin by pin to avoid damaging the board. Then I removed the pin fragments and the excess solder from the pads. Now, what are the possible options to replace this custom IC? Luckily, the IWM is probably the most documented custom IC of the Apple II line. A link to this collection of documents is in this video description. The IWM was used for the first time, I think, on the Apple IIc, but in a dual inline 28 pins package. However, if the deep IWM could be found as spare, then it would be possible to construct an adapter. Anyway, no AWM IC of any form was found for sale on the usual auction and other sites. Another option would be recreating the IWM logic into a modern CPLD device. After all, the original documentation is available. In fact, this has been done by a few designers of the modern SD card based Apple disk drive replacements, but as far as could check, nobody released the IWM implementation to the public domain. I could make a new CPLD implementation from scratch, but that would require months with my current spare time. The IWM IC has also been used in all early Apple Macintosh machines, since it was enough flexible to handle also the 3.5 floppy drives via appropriate software control. Now I own quite a few Macintosh models, mainly from the years when they had no value anymore. Some of them have the Tip28 IWM like this Mac SE. Some of the newer ones have the enhanced disk controller with added frequency modulation and MFM support. On these ones the IC is called the SWIM and it is a 44 pins PLCC integrated circuit, so not compatible with the old IWM. 
To this last category belongs the vast majority of the ones I get, even if I might have a few more Macs in really forgotten places. I've never had much interest in repairing them, as Apple had already fully switched to the dark side, and no schematics can be found for them even today. However, I finally found this old motherboard. I think I've discarded its case because it was really too broken. And this one has a 28 pins PLCC IWM, and it was even socketed. That's what I was looking for. Now, the part numbers do not match. The original is a 344S0041, and the Macintosh one is a 344S0062. Also, no documentation exists about these Apple part numbers. However, I could verify that the pinout is the same. By simple diode checking with the multimeter, I found that the 2GS IWM is an NMOS chip, while the Mac 1 is a CMOS chip. But this difference should not make any functional difference between the two. So I've soldered a PLCC socket on the 2GS PCB, and I prefer this kind of socket with large openings on the bottom to allow easier soldering, whatever the method I'm going to use. Then installed the X Macintosh IWM. At this point, we only need to check the result. So let's power on. Can you believe it? It works fine. I consider this repair as a little revenge for this Apple 2GS. As you may know, the 2GS was intentionally made slower than the original Macintosh. So this 2GS was fixed with a Macintosh IC. I hope you enjoyed this short repair that in reality took quite some time for me to try to find at least some information on the Apple Macintosh IC codes. If you have any question, please use the comment section below. It's all for now, have a nice time and thank you for watching.